happenings, you'll begin to see the bigger moves in the $20 gold pieces here shortly. Well, that's as expected. Uh, I think uh, what has been going on is some of these ETFs have been uh, pulling uh, investment away from both coins and shares. And uh, I continue to tell people uh, it is a an absolute certainty that there's going to be all kinds of scandals. Number one, I got a letter and an article today, which you'll see in the next issue of the IF from England, where the Bank of England couldn't make the delivery uh, on some gold, and they gave them coin melt, which means that the gold had to come from the U.S. Then COMEX had to be bailed out about a month and a half ago, and then earlier than that as well by the Canadians who lost their gold. It's disappeared. Of course, they gave it to the, uh, to the U.S. Treasury. And, uh, and, uh, the European Central Bank loaned gold to COMEX as well. Which means they don't have any gold either, or they don't have very much. And so, push is coming to shove. And these countries don't have the gold to meet the demand from these entities, private entities, such as Com- Comex or people who take delivery of gold uh, from the uh, the London uh, Metals Exchange, or I know I know for sure that the silver ETF is using futures and derivatives, and the states are writing their contract. Uh, GLD, which is the gold one, is lying about it. If I had to guess, I'd say they probably have half of the gold of what they say they have. That's just a guess, because there's no way of finding out, because you, you can't get an audit out of them. And so there's a lot of scandals along the way, and they were created, uh, particularly the, the ETFs, were created to suck gold uh, out of the coin and share market. That, that's what it's all about. And uh, most of the people in that market are uh, professionals. But it's simple for them to do that, so they trade it. If you call any major brokerage house and say, well, I want to get involved in gold, and they say, oh, the best thing to do is buy this uh, GLD here, the Exchange Traded Fund. And they just keep it simple because they don't have a brain in their head and they don't know anything about gold or the shares or the coins or much else for that matter. You know, there's a big difference between having the intelligence to take a test and pass it and being able to put qualitative information together and put it into something that is viable and workable and creates something, if you know what I mean. And most people today don't have that ability. Uh, The USDX, how did that do today? Uh, the USDX is down about 18 at 76.17, off its lows of the day, though. It's down, what, 30? It like, yeah, it was. It was like 76.04 or 05, somewhere around in that level. They had to, had they have to come in in the last five minutes and done that. Well, it's no secret that the central banks are trying to keep the dollar up. I mean, it, it's common knowledge. Yes, it is common knowledge. You know, Bob, I just thought I was distracted there for a moment. I do want to mention something, too, when you were talking about the GLDs. People have a hard time understanding the difference between having real gold in your hands. And I'm sure that many of the listeners, you know, that we have to the program, perhaps they don't have that much of a problem. But, you know, people have a hard time distinguishing about owning real real gold versus the, the paper, like the GLDs. and and so forth and it's like you know folks you really don't own it you really don't have it all you own is paper you don't own it unless you have it in your hand and that's why we stress it's so important to take possession of your gold the only time you shouldn't take possession of your gold is if you have an IRA a gold IRA and it has to to be stored 
at a, uh, a depository. But you shouldn't be going into these gold GLDs and so forth thinking that you own gold. Because you don't. You don't own it until you have it. So big difference, and it's very important. And, and Bob, I hear people tell me all the time, well, I don't know what to do with it when I get it home. I'm scared to have it in my home. Buy a safe. They cost 250 bucks. Have somebody screwing into the floor in in your closet. And no, no one will be know that it's there. And, and if you're if you're younger people, you get a big safe, put your guns and your coins in there, and your important papers. You know the big ones cost uh, maybe eighteen hundred dollars or something like that. And uh, you know I always have one, and uh, it's fairly empty today. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, uh, that's the way to go on it. I mean, the, the worst thing that you can do is tell people you own gold. That is your, you know, the, the regular burglar, Bob, I think when he breaks in, I mean, he goes after he goes after the, the jewelry, which is in the bedrooms and, you know, the most popular places where people hide things. Everybody hides things in the same place. You know, they're not going to be, you know, the random burglar is not going to be looking for your gold coin. Only if you begin showing it around and, and telling people that you own it, so just be careful out there. And in fact, I guess there was uh, uh, a, a dealer coming from a show, and supposedly I don't know the details on it. I guess he was it was a hit and run type with his coins, but you know some of these it says that it was in his his, his gold inventory was in his car while he was in the motel. It's like, well, that's kind of it's kind of dumb, but I don't know all the details, so be careful, folks out there. Keep what you do private. Any other comments, Robert? Um, no, I think you covered that pretty good. Um, I don't have any questions today. Melody has a couple. Uh the one from Chris? Um, yes, I'll... And I, I got an answer. I don't know whether you do, because it was also sent to Wendy Wilson. Oh. Did you did you get that? Yeah, I did. I don't know what I did with that one. Uh, it was about an IP address, but it's computer-related, so I really don't know... Um, well, Wendy said she thought it was a scam. Yeah. And uh, quite frankly, it, it's really out of my league. I, mean, I, I don't know the difference between an IP address and a URL name. <laughs> How about an SAT? <laughs> or a WXY? ABC. <laughs> <laughs> so... But, uh, oh boy, so, we're no, crazy here. I know on and off. That's all I want to know: how to turn something <laughs> on and how to turn it off. That's... When you sound as technically oriented as I am. Mm -hmm. We got lots of uh, technical. It's all low tech stuff here. With 95% of Americans in over their heads in personal debt and holding mortgages, ones which community banks hold the paper proper paperwork. How will personal debt be treated during this economic breakdown and within an environment of a collapsing dollar? You know, I get this on every program I'm on. Mm -hmm. And let me give you a scenario of logic. A year and a half to two and a half years from now, the dollar will be officially devalued. And I think it'll be three old ones for one new one. And at the same time, there will be a meeting of all of the representatives of the countries in the world just like there was at the Smithsonian meetings in the early 70s and at the Plaza Accord in Paris in 1985 and they will revalue and devalue all the currencies against each other internationally and nation to nation I think what they will do is cut the debt that's owed by debtors by two-thirds in other words the nation will be responsible for one-third of what they owe other people. And this is not unusual in history. It's, it's happened many, many times. 
and um, in fact in the Middle East um, probably uh, two, three, four, five hundred years prior to the birth of Christ uh, when a new leader came in whether it was a, a king or uh, someone who was elected uh, they always forgave debt all the debt I know you're saying to yourself how can they do that well they did so historically it's not unusual anyway the question always arises how are they going to treat the debt in America we're not interested in what happens internationally it's our house and our car and all that stuff that we're 